Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to look at five different ways to countersink holes. So, I don't want to get too technical here, but countersinking holes is when you take a hole that already exists and kind of make a bigger hole around it that kind of slopes down. It's done a lot of time to like hide screw heads into a hole, that kind of thing. Um, everybody here is probably not looking to create countersunk holes for screw heads, but the process we go through has a lot of functionality, even if this is not the specific geometry you might want to create. So let's take a look right now. All right, so I created a model with a couple different uh, pieces of geometry here, because there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, so I had a smaller hole, larger hole. This one's already got a section pushed down, and then I have some solid pieces over here. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna start simple. So if I have a hole like this, and again, I wanna create that countersunk, the sloping geometry around the opening, what I could do in this is, I'll start with using offset, grab this hole and pull it out. Now, I'm gonna do this kind of arbitrary dimensions here, but if you had very specific dimensions you want for either your screw hole or for the countersink, you could of course be more specific as you, as you do this. I'm gonna go into move and I'm gonna grab this piece right here, the hole on the inside, and I'm gonna constrain vertically. So I'm going the blue axis. And with that, that's a quick and easy counter hole from a smaller hole. Easy to do that. This SketchUp automatically does this. When you push it down, it's gonna stretch the geometry. Not a problem. All right, so what happens if we have something larger like this and we wanna kind of fill in where the countersunk hole is gonna go? I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to create a piece of geometry off the edge. It's gonna come in like this, maybe it'll go up to about there. And I'm gonna create basically that little, that shape, flat on the sides and then a slope on the top. What I can do then is grab this outer circle, go to tools, follow me, and pick the face. And again, I get very similar geometry by having that piece follow around the hole. This could be done, either of these could be done in a position like this. So this, this I have small hole, bigger hole, I could do something very, very similar by going like this and then grab this hole, tools, follow me, click the shape, and it goes around. That's an option. I'm gonna undo that because I could also grab this ring right here and just move it up to here. Same, very similar final geometry, but you can see just by moving that, again, it's what SketchUp does, that sticky geometry, where it grabs the hole and stretches the face up, and then that ring kind of disappears into this ring, and I end up with that countersunk hole. With any of these two, I can fine tune, because I can grab this ring, for example, and I can move that up or down to make my, counters my countersunk hole bigger. I could grab this, I could scale it around the middle to make that smaller or wider, which is gonna change the pitch of that. All connected geometry, sticky geometry, is gonna let me make it real easy to make changes there. So, I was thinking about this, and these are nice, but they're not really repeatable. I have to create this geometry over and over and over again. So I wanna look at some different options for maybe putting this into multiple pieces. Or, what if I wanna countersink into something that's not flat? So, I have two more examples here to show. I need a copy of my countersunk geometry. So I'm going to copy the hole out of this example right here. So see that piece right there? Uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, grab this bottom and just kinda drop it long. And what I could do right now, I'll grab it and copy it again. See my modifier key with move and I drop it right here. And what will kinda happen automatically is I can just tell it, okay, intersect here and then I can delete that piece. And then down here, it doesn't quite intersect, but what I could do is select this and this, right click and say intersect faces with selection. Then I can delete that piece, delete that piece, and I've got a countersunk hole again. I could do that again. Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna grab it. Just wanna, this one's gonna go a little bit different. I'll grab it by the top. I'm gonna grab copies so I can put that other one back. And I'm gonna put this right here. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna grab all of it. Grab every piece there, right click, intersect face with selection, and now I just, it's a matter of deleting out the extra geometry. So get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of that, 
get rid of that. And down at the bottom, grab this, delete it, delete. So much deleting. And there I got that same countersunk hole in that dome right there. Or in that dome. It's not a dome, it's an arch top. I don't know what you, the non flat part. That's the importantness of it. Over here, we have some, a little bit different case because I actually have two solids. So I have a solid block right here. And then again, similar geometry, a block with an arc in it. Or what we want to do here is take this piece, this counter, this piece that we want to cut out and turn it into a solid. So I'm going to close up the bottom, just going to draw a line partial on the part of that circle right there. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I actually, I don't like this being backwards faces. So I'm going to go uh, triple click to select it all, reverse face, and then make it a group. And if I come over to entity info, it is a solid group. This guy over here, also a solid group. So what I can do now is grab it. I'm going to make a copy again because I want to use this multiple times. Drop it on there. So now this block is a solid group. My countersunk hole template basically is a solid group. So I'm going to go turn on solid tools. And what I can do is I can say select my countersink and subtract it from this piece. And I get that there. This is nice because using this method, I could actually copy like an array of these pieces across a solid and then just subtract them all. It also works again, like I said, for more complex geometry. This isn't terribly complex. It's just a single arch here. But if this was way cut up, super wavy, something like that, being able to go just subtract it from there, cut it out, way easier way to uh, cut those pieces out. So there we go. I said five ways is actually, well, I guess these two count as one. So still five to seven ways. You can interpret that how you want. Uh, different ways to countersink holes in your geometry. So like I said, there's a chance that you are not going to create a model that needs a countersunk hole. Maybe you don't model screws into wood or, or metal or something like that. But the process of bending the geometry, using that sticky geometry to stretch, or using solids to cut chunks out of other pieces, great tools, and it lends itself to a lot of different workflows. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. A lot of our content more and more all the time is coming from suggestions from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.